you know, a couple things I'd like to mention is, um, you know, Coach Bobby Bowden's passing is something that uh, really is um, saddens all of college football. Uh, this guy was probably uh, the greatest ambassador, at least in my view, or one of the great ambassadors of all time. Uh, because he coached, he had success coaching, but he was also one of the greatest people uh, and set a, an outstanding example for everyone in our profession in terms of uh, you don't have to dislike somebody, you don't have to discredit somebody that you're competing against, that um, you, you, your, your example of being a uh, good person uh, is you know, something that can help us all professionally. Uh, he wasn't always just about him. Uh, he was always about helping other people. And our thoughts and prayers go out to his family um, and friends. Uh, the, the, this, this is a very sad time for all of us. But, you know, Coach Bowden leaves a legacy that uh, a lot of us can continue to learn from and grow from and uh, something that will never be forgotten. So, um, Coach, um, Coach Bowden is a big staple, especially here in Alabama. What was something that you remember of those Florida State teams, and what was your relationship with him one-on-one, uh, -on -one? and did you kind of pick his brain throughout the years as a coach? Um, well, you know, first of all, I think everybody knows this story, but I think it's still worth, you know, telling because there's not very many people in the world that um, would have that kind of compassion for somebody else when – Coach Bowden was a, an assistant coach at West Virginia University, and I think Jim Carlin was the head coach. Uh, he kind of recruited the area that I grew up in in West Virginia, which was pretty rural. And, you know, I think we had three players from my era that played at West Virginia University that were really good players and all ended up making All-American uh, that Coach Bowden recruited that my dad actually coached in Pop Warner. Um, so they knew each other much better than I knew Coach Bowden as a high school player growing up. But um, my first year of being a graduate assistant when my father passed away and I was at Kent State being a graduate assistant for Don James. And, um, you know, one day the phone rings and it's Coach Bowden. And, you know, he says, I know your father passed away. I know your mom might be struggling if you feel like you need to come closer to home because Morgantown was like 25 miles from where I grew up. Um, I'll ha I'll, I have a job for you here if you need to do that. So I was like, wow, this guy's the head coach at West Virginia University, and he has that much compassion for my family and our situation and our circumstance and my mother. Um, I, not very many people would, would do something like that. So, but I think that was a reflection of what kind of person he was. Uh, I've always tried to emulate Coach Bowden in terms of the class that he represented his organization with. I uh, seldom said a bad word about anybody. I uh, was always very kind and upbeat uh, to everybody that he ever met uh, and was always that way with me. Uh, and I would talk to him on occasion about, um, you know, things that, you know, I had questioned about professionally and there's, probably not many in this profession that I have more respect for than Coach Bowden, not only as a coach, not only what he sort of accomplished on the field, but uh, the kind of person he was, the kind of character he had, and uh, the class that um, he sort of exemplified as a college football coach. Let's okay. start off today with uh, to keep the Bowden family in your prayers. I know we, we lost a great man in Coach Bobby Bowden today and uh, meant so many things to so many people, meant a ton to me. And not only just when I coached with him, but when I was learning to be a coach and around him and at different times with his family and what kind of person he was and who he was. It's amazing how he affected so many people, but he lived his life the way it was. And like I said, it's fine a gentleman and coach that's ever walked the sideline, um, in my opinion. And uh, just a uh, tremendous human being. But the lives he touched and the players he touched, uh, that's his legacy. And that's what he always talked about. And we did in the last times we talked about that. He, he said those things. and. Uh, he definitely did that, so he lived a forward life and uh, said he was ready. And he knows where he's definitely at, that's for sure. I'm, I'm sure you have a bunch, but I wondered if you could share maybe a couple of your favorite uh, memories or stories about Coach Bowden. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you know, there's so many. It, it, it just my favorite ones I tell. Can't tell them all. <laughs> and... Uh, 
I'm trying to think my favorite one. My favorite one of me was when I, I always think of this when I was learning to be a coach and used to work the Bowden Academies, the, the amount of information that used to come out of him that he didn't even realize he was exerting and how he did things. Not when I coached with him, not even when I was there. We do the Bowden Academy, which was the thing. They have that Manning Academy now. Well, that was all bridged and thought of after the Bowden Academy. That's what started all that and gave all the ideas. Matter of fact, Peyton was in the camp. He used to come, he came to the camp and things. And it was quarterbacks and receivers all over the country that came from everywhere. And that's all you did for three days was throw the football and run routes and catch the football. And uh, we used to sit there. My, 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 some of my greatest memories was sitting there with him afterwards, like after the camp was over because I was a counselor for the quarterbacks. And Tommy and Jeff did receivers. Terry did quarterbacks. We were all there, and Bobby drove around, looked at everybody, you know, and watched everybody, and kept everything. Was there at every camp, every second of every moment on the field because it was a family affair. And I was included in that and was very blessed to be in that. But at night, when all the coaches would come and people would bring people and some old coaches and his old buddies, sometimes it knew him from years ago, played for him, different things. They'd stay, get a dorm room, and you'd set up in the dorm up at even at Sanford. You'd sit there in the dorms, put your feet up, and he'd take his socks off, put his feet up on the table, just like a – I mean, he was so normal. He, he's, he could make you feel like you knew him for 20 years in the first two minutes you ever talked to him. He was so genuine and honest. And just sitting there telling stories about ball, and coach would ask him questions and things he would do, and how he handled recruiting situations, and how he handled. And I, as a young guy, you know, just uh, 22, 23 years old, sat there and would just listen over and over and over and over and over. And then if he was outside by the pool, sometimes we'd then we had it at different places eventually, and sometimes there was a pool there. If we were staying in a little dorm, he'd have his feet out there, and he always sat out there. Mm -hmm. We'd always sit, and he and I had a bad habit. We both chewed. And people didn't know that about him. We both chew. We'd sit there and have the chew and spit, and everybody else would watch. But I mean, and, but he would talk to everybody. But just the knowledge he would put out and how he did things, the way he did things, stories about people back then. And back when he was learning to coach, how he admired Coach Bryant, how he admired the different people he grew up admiring in, in, the, in the day. And just listening to him, the volume of information you used to get, that was my favorite memories of him. It really was. Now, when I coached with him, it was phenomenal. And we had some unbelievable talks. So he was an unbelievable historian of the game and loved the game. And our memories of Sanford together because we both played there. Uh, and then how it was Howard College then, and he went back. And people know because people forget he was, you know, he went to Alabama on scholarship. And he left Alabama after a semester. And, you know, the people didn't know the reason why is because he went back and married Ann. You couldn't be on scholarship at that time and be married, believe that or not. When they first got married, and it was more important, he wanted to marry Andy, moved back, and he went to Sanford, and how he did it, how he gave that up. And I ended up transferring to Sanford. It was just ironic. I mean, we we talk about different things, why you make decisions in life and coaching and, and just listening to him. It was just a, mad, a volume of knowledge and what he did and how he did it. And then, you know, some of the times that, like, they have – when I remember when I first became an offensive coordinator at Sanford, and that was in uh, going into the 91 season after the 90 year. Jeff, had, Jeff was the OC. I was quarterback coach, and Jeff went to take the job at Southern Miss – so Terry made me the OC and wanted to learn. So that year they were playing Penn State. I'll never forget him and Joe Paterno were playing in the uh, Blockbuster Bowl. Blockbuster Bowl back then was really good. They were both top ten teams. They were great. As a matter of fact, it was Dossie's senior year. And uh, so I went and I became a coordinator. And I sat and the family took me, put me in the hotel, kept me up. I mean, I stayed there the whole week with him and went to every meeting he did. And I sat in the back of his, his coaching meetings, just watched him organize and structure. Then I did his offensive meetings and watched him set up his offense, how he called it, what he did when he watched film was just a fly on the wall sitting in the back. And then I remember sitting, and then I went to the press box that night in the game and put the headsets on without a phone and listened to him call the game. He and Joe Paterno were going at it that night, back and forth, back and forth. And Dossie that year was a first-team All-American. And I remember this game was getting – I always remember this. He always saw that players make a difference in, in games, not plays. You got to make sure you got to certain guys, have that certain list of guys that you have to get that ball to. And Amp Lee was the MVP that night. He played good. Casey Weldon was good. But Dossie was a star, and they had to have plays. And I remember they had a little list of plays over here heading to the ball. And he kept saying, Mark, Mark. He's talking to Mark Rick, who was his quarterback coach at the time. Uh, Brad Scott, I believe, was the offense coordinator. And uh, we got to get that ball to Dossie. We got to get that ball. And he had to pull those plays out, man. About five or six, about running about six plays, and about four or five of them went straight to Dossie. And they caught it, went straight down the field, won a big game. And just those experiences, how much, how vital that was to me at such a young age to learn how to organize, how to structure, how to treat people, but then more importantly, and then how to coach and then, you know, and call games and do things. And his style was different than a lot of different guys sometimes on offense and how he did it. And, just, I mean, just I could go on. I could sit and tell hours of those stories. I mean, hours of them. Some things he occasionally hit me on the sideline when I was calling plays in the game. 
come up there and I mean he made some it was just some of the little comments he'd make every now and then come out of him huh you know but then you knew it was coming out of who it was coming out of it was it was such unbelievable respect and how he would say things funny time he'd say some funny things to you during a game one time you'd be in the middle of calling plays maybe he one time he bumped me and said something to me I ain't gonna say what he said it was a good thing it was about we were moving the ball up and down the field and and uh, I, I, I started laughing almost got delayed game because he just caught me completely off guard when he would say those things, but he was, but he was just a tremendous man, tremendous competitor, and like I said, the lives he affected and people he affected he didn't even know about is is the amazing thing about him. So.